Howdy folks, my name is Terry, and I have partnered with the amazing folks at Renegade Game Studios to paint up and show you how to paint up, more importantly, the ubiquitous original five Power Rangers from the Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid board game. These miniatures are quite large and very forgiving, so if you're new to painting miniatures, they're a fantastic place to start off. And I have created this tutorial using really simple techniques and minimized the number of paints you need to paint all five of them. We're only using 12 to get started. I'm really excited to share this with you. And if you want to get a little bit more information about prepping your miniatures, priming them, and the tools you need, you should check out my pumpkin wrapper tutorial video, which I also made and talk about those specific things. But for now, let's just jump onto the table. The first step after priming your miniatures white, yes, we are priming white, is to paint on a base coat. It'll be the color of the ranger. These miniatures will come in colored plastic, but priming them helps the paint stick to the model better. And white primer makes it easier for these paints to show up as bright, bold colors on the miniatures. It also gives you a consistent color if you need to fix any little mistakes on the miniature you make later on because the paint you're using is the exact same color as the base coat color of your mini. You'll want to thin your paints to the consistency of somewhere between milk and cream on your wet palette. I show you how to make it in the pumpkin wrapper video, so if you're curious, check that out. The paints that I'm using come out of the bottle as thick as yogurt when they're brand new, and if they're a little older, they might look like sour cream or even as thick as toothpaste. So mix in water a drop at a time or two with your brush until you get the right consistency. That'll make sure that the result on your miniature is smooth and your paint doesn't end up being too thick and obscuring your details. We'll just paint over most of the model, top to bottom, on the uniforms, and I did most of the weapons as well for ease. You'll want to do two to three thin coats. Just make sure each layer dries completely before you paint on the next coat. If there are places where the paint didn't fully cover, you can do a little touch up rather than doing a full top to bottom coat. The process is the same for all the rangers. When they're all base coated up, they'll look like this. Don't worry about trying to read the paint colors on the bottles. All the tools and paints I use are listed in the description below. These paints are available at any of your local game stores or hobby stores. If they sell board games, they probably can stock or order these paints easily in for you. Miniature paints are formulated for painting coarse miniatures, and as a result, they're very different than craft paint you can get, say, at Walmart, and they're definitely worth the investment for the best result. Now that the base coats are on, we're going to give the models some depth. As miniature painters, we paint the illusion of light onto the miniatures using various techniques. This process is pretty straightforward for the Red and Blue Ranger. We're using bottled shades applied to the miniature. For the Red Ranger, we'll use a red shade. Just put a few drops onto your dry palette and apply it straight without watering it down onto the miniature. When it's been applied, just check the model over to make sure it's settling in the recesses of the miniature rather than puddling over the broader, flatter areas. If it is, just rinse out your brush, take off the excess water onto paper towel, and use the damp bristles to move it around or sop it up. These shades also deepen the color when applied straight. They cling to the base coat a little bit and glaze that color, making it look a little bit truer. And we really want that quality. We'll be doing the same with the Blue Ranger, applying a blue shade from head to toe straight without watering it down. I personally like this brand because you can easily tell how it'll dry while it's wet, and you can see where it's collecting and puddling and move it around if you need to. Don't stress about seeing excess wash where the model will eventually be a different color. We'll be painting all over those areas anyways, but you do want to make sure the areas that will be blue have blue shade where it belongs, in the shadows and creases, and it isn't puddling on the broader, flatter, higher raised areas. For the pink pink and yellow rangers, we're going to be using a similar product, but this time we're going to thin it out. This is dark tone from that same line of shades we used for red and blue. When applied straight, it almost looks black, but when you add water to it, it becomes a subtle gray. We're going to thin it out really, really thin. The shade will then settle into the crevices of the model, but won't heavily cling to those raised areas, and it won't obscure the color of the model. This shade is watered down about three or four parts of water to one part shade. It's easy to count it in drops. I'm also using a touch of dish soap on the end of my brush, just the barest hint of soap. When you spread it on your palette, this mix should appear as transparent gray. We'll apply this to the yellow and pink rangers. We want to apply this as thinly as possible. This wash 
won't cling, so you might notice it puddling on the base, and that's fine. Don't stress about a messy base. You can always clean that up in the end. If you do find that the effect is too subtle, you can just spot apply the wash where you want to darken it up after the first layer of wash has dried. Similarly, if it puddles somewhere you don't want it to, just go back in with some of your base coat color paint and touch it up. For the Black Ranger, we're going to dry brush highlights onto the model and then blend them down with a wash. The easiest way to highlight a miniature is to dry brush it. We're going to take a gray paint, put it down on our palette, a dry palette, and we don't want to add water to paint that we're dry brushing with. And we're going to take a dry brush, drip bristles into the paint, and wipe off like 95% of the paint onto the paper towel. And bring that brush over the model. This technique deposits paint on the highest points of the model, creating the illusion of light. Once the miniature has been dry brushed, we're going to shade the miniature to re-emphasize the shadows on the miniature by applying the dark tone. The same stuff we used on the pink and yellow rangers, but this time we're applying it straight out of the bottle like we did for the blue and red rangers. We're going to let that wash completely dry. It's really important to let each layer dry before you move on to the next step, but now you can see how there's a little more dimension on each miniature after we've done this step. Now that all the base colors are done, we get to the most intense part of painting these miniatures, painting the white. There's a point on every miniature I paint where the model looks like a bit of a mess. You'll hit that point here. And I'm telling you this because I don't want you to get discouraged when you reach this point. This is the hump of miniature painting. Somewhere in between 60 and 90% done, it'll look kind of awful. But once you power through that stage, the model will really look great and you'll be into the finishing details. Thin down your paint to base coat consistency or a little bit thinner, somewhere like milk and cream again. And when you paint the first coat on, it'll probably look too thin. Resist the urge to apply the paint on thicker. Instead, we're going to do multiple coats. I did between three or four on these miniatures, again, letting each coat dry completely before I applied the next coat. These thin coats will ensure the end result will look smooth and even. There's a few things that all rangers have that will be white. The diamonds on their chest, their necks, their gloves, their belts, and their boots. There's also a few details unique to each ranger that we'll be painting white as well. We're going to apply white to the miniature where it'll be silver too. This will help make the silver look consistent across all the rangers and keep the base coat from bleeding through the silver. For red here, we're going to hit the blade of his sword with the white, his mouth area, and the silver detailing around his visor. You'll need to block out the white with a single coat. You don't have to do too many thin coats for perfect coverage, unlike the parts that will ultimately stay white because we're going to be adding silver on top. Follow the model sculpt in terms of where the paint goes. Painting miniatures is not like painting a picture on a blank flat canvas. It's more like paint by numbers and the sculpt of the miniature is going to guide you. Now take your time with this step. Go as slowly as you're comfortable. You might want a smaller brush for the finer details and to get into those tighter points, like the details on the visors, up into the shoulders, and in and around the neck area, as well as the points on the diamond details. For the visor, we'll focus on keeping paint away from where the red is already set, but we're not going to be worried about overpainting the border into the visor as we'll be painting that black afterwards. It's a good idea to do each area separately so you don't accidentally touch wet paint while you're handling the model. For example, I left the belt for last as I tend to hold the model closer into my palm, and that just asks for freshly applied paint on the boots to get smudged all over the miniature. You can actually paint the rangers in a batch as this step, painting each area of the ranger one at a time, like doing all their belts and all their boots and so forth in one go. It gives time for each layer and each section to dry. I'm gonna emphasize that you exercise some self-care as well. Take breaks between layers to focus your eyes on things that are more than a few inches away from your nose. Stretch out your wrists, your hands, your fingers, your shoulders, and your back. As weird as it sounds, painting miniatures can be hard on your body. Sometimes our posture isn't so great when we're hunched over a miniature, and if we're new, you might not have the fine motor control muscles as developed in your wrists and hands to paint for a long period of time. Taking breaks and stretching will help prevent you from being really uncomfortable, especially if you're doing a longer painting session. Now for the Black Ranger, there's a silver and yellow on his axe, and we're going to block these areas out in white, including the little recesses in the axe's shaft. That'll be yellow. 
Painting a white undercoat for yellow is especially important because it'll make the yellow go on smoothly and look bold and bright. It's especially challenging to do this straight onto black. There's also some details on his helmets, like his tusk and around the visors, that'll be silver. And the eye sockets will be yellow, so we'll want to block that out with white as well. For the pink ranger, there's some parts on her helmet that have white, more so than the other rangers, like on the sides and the backs and top of the helmets. So don't forget those parts. We'll also cover her bow in white, and we'll try to avoid the fletching on the arrow and the arrowhead, as they'll be pink, but we can always touch those up afterwards. For yellow, we'll make sure we have the white on the blades, as well as the teeth and the nose of the Sabertooth Tiger helmet details. For blue, we'll get the horns on his helmet, the details on his visor, and around his visor, and the blades on his weapon. Once you've applied the white and it's solid and looks great, you can take the time to touch up any stray paint with the base colors you used from the first step. But before you go focusing on those little oopsies, I want you to put the model down on the table an arm's length away, the same distance you'll be playing with these miniatures. It's easy to see those little imperfections when a model is two or three inches away from your nose, but we don't play with miniatures from those distances. Those small mistakes might be totally imperceptible on the tabletop, and I highly encourage you not to stress about them if you can't see them when the mini is a few feet away from you. Spend your time on the stuff you can see. Now we're on to the final details. We're going to put some red, some white, some black, and some silver and gold onto our wet palette and thin them out to our base coat consistency. For red, we're going to paint silver on the sword and his visor details. We're going to paint gold on the outside detailing of his sword. This is really fiddly, so again, get a brush with a fine point and go slow to pick out the edge details. There's no special trick other than going slowly. Take your time and do your best, and remember that any tiny mistake will probably not be recognizable when you put the miniatures on the table to play with, so you don't need to be so perfect you go cross-eyed on these details. We're gonna paint the belt buckle black and the visor black. For red, we can keep that middle circle on his belt red, but even if you paint the whole thing black, you can paint the red on in the circle in a layer afterwards. We'll take some white paint and paint the shape of the outside of the circle with the belt buckle. It doesn't have to cover everything and it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna go over that with some silver anyways. Now we're gonna touch up the red circle of paint on the belt buckle for red, but if you painted the whole thing black like you will have to do on the other rangers, you can just paint that red circle on after. Finally, once the red is dry, we're gonna put a dot of gold on the red. I'm just wiggling my brush in a little tiny circle and it's gonna make that shape. And just like that, red is done. We're gonna repeat the belt buckle steps on all the rangers. For the extra details on black, we're gonna add some yellow onto our palette and paint up his axe. We're gonna put silver on the visor, the bottom part of the axe handle, and the axe head blade where they're silver. I'm sure you know that there are different styles of coloring for this weapon, so you can adjust this method I've shown you from this video in terms of blocking out the areas with white to match the version you want to paint up. Since we blocked out the yellow parts in white, we only need one coat of yellow to cover. You can thin the yellow out pretty thin, and it'll still show up as bright yellow on the white. Apply it to the rings of the axe shaft, the axe head, and the eye sockets of the helmet, and you're ready to go. For yellow, we'll paint up the blades and the handle bits of her weapons in silver, and we'll also touch the silver onto the saber tooth tiger fangs and the nose on her helmet. Then we'll put black on her visor and in the eye socket details of her helmet. For blue, there's his weapon blades, that'll be silver, and the helmet details with the horns. For pink, we'll paint up her whole bow silver along with the shaft of her arrow and pick out some of the details of her bow with some pink paint after. There's some relief sculpted on the sides and some pink bits on the front of her bow that we'll paint pink. Now you can customize these basic techniques. The big thing I want you to take away from this video is that Whatever you do, I encourage you to make these rangers yours. In this video, I tried to simplify the steps and make it as easy as possible. But you can always add more details and experiment to really personalize these miniatures. Thank you so much to Renegade Game Studios for supporting me and making this video possible. I am so excited. And uh, be sure to check out that other tutorial. You can also hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe if you want to see more painting tutorials like this one, and uh, follow me on the social medias. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon.